Welcome back. Um, so I'm going to make a very short video today uh, because I actually have to head out. I'm going to the Resonate Audio Festival in Richmond, Virginia. It's a podcast festival and I need to catch a train from New York to Richmond. So I have a really quick and dirty video for you today talking about some of the similarities between Reaper Retooled and Pro Tools when it comes to editing and key commands. So if you're a Pro Tools user and you're trying to get a sense of like how similar is Reaper Retooled and Pro Tools, let me just walk you through it really quickly to show you some of the similarities. Okay. So I've got a podcast project here um, and I've got some tracks with dialogue up here. I've got music down here. And um, maybe just the first thing to show is uh, the mixer. So in Pro Tools, opening the mixer is command equals or control equals if you're on Windows. So that will open up the mixer also here. And it should look pretty familiar. You've got your faders, mute, solo, all that stuff on the bottom and on the top, you have your effects inserts. And I've got some of uh, the stock Reaper EQ and compressors, which have some extra visualizations to show you what's happening there. Um, and then on the side, I have my master fader and you can change sort of the shape and size of these things as well. So command equals opens and closes the mixer. And now let's just look at the tracks. So you can see I've got some dialogue tracks here. About 15 years. And some music tracks Stop. down here. An evening. I, I them, walked up. Um, with a shift S. So that should be the same as Pro Tools. Then when it comes to editing, let's just zoom in on something here. So I made a selection and now I'm going to hit the E key to zoom in. Um, so that's also similar to Pro Tools, E will zoom in on whatever item you click on, make it as, uh, it'll expand it to the size of the whole screen. Um, and then if you hit E again, it'll zoom back out. Then when it comes to actually editing items, so Reaper doesn't use tools in the same way that Pro Tools has tools for grabbing or selecting or trimming. Um, it's more similar to Pro Tools smart tool function. Um, so what that means is, what your mouse does changes depending on where you hover uh, across an item. So just to demonstrate that, um, if I click and drag from the bottom of an item, it moves it side to side like that. And then if I click and drag from the top of an item, it makes a selection like this. This is actually a razor selection or a razor area. So dragging from the top makes a selection, dragging from the bottom moves, if I make a selection, I can splice or cut or split uh, or edit that item by doing command E or B, and that will make a cut. So that should be the same as Pro Tools. And then I've also set up the H key to do a hover edit. So normally you'd have to click, move the edit cursor to where you want it to go, and then make the edit that way. But with a hover edit, you can just move your mouse right where you want to go without actually clicking. Um, you can just move the mouse cursor itself. And then I'm hitting the H key to make these splits like that. So H is a hover edit. Um, in my previous configuration, I had the B key do that. I think for people who are coming from Pro Tools though, um, that was a little bit confusing. So I'm going to keep the B key as sort of the traditional uh, edit or cut or splice uh, uh, function in, in Pro Tools. So Command E and B will do the same thing, but uh, H will be the key that you use for a hover edit. So H for hover. That's a change in my uh, latest version of Retool. Okay, let's also talk about other zones. So if I hover my mouse over the edge of an item, I can trim it like that or move the edge. And then same on the other side, move the edge that way. And then you saw there was a fade here. If I grab from the top corner, I can create a fade by grabbing from the top corners. And then I can also hold down command and change the shape of the fade that way. Or I can right click on the fade and it has some preset shapes for me. Um, if I have two items next to each other and I do a selection across them, and hit the F key, that'll make a fade between them, like so. Um, and then let's see, trimming from either edge. So if I click here and hit A, it will 
trim from the edge of the item to my edit cursor. And similarly on this side, if I click and do S, that will trim it from the right side of the item. So that should be the same as in Pro Tools. And then if I click and do D, it will make a fade from the edge to my edit cursor. And if I do G on the right side, it'll make a fade from the right edge to the edit cursor. So those are all the same as in Pro Tools. The one difference here is while you can click and do this function like so, you actually don't have to click. You can instead just mouse where you want to go. So instead of clicking, I could put my mouse here and then do G and it will make a fade directly to my mouse instead of the edit cursor. So if you're used to clicking and then doing your edit that way, that'll work for you. But if you want to work a little faster, you actually don't even have to click. You can just mouse over where you want to make that change, point to it, then do the function. In this case, it's D to create a fade and you know, then you're done. You might also be used to using clip gain in Pro Tools. This is called a uh, take volume in Reaper, but similarly, there's a little knob right here and that lets you change the volume of the item like so. And uh, if you're used to using uh, the clip gain line in Pro Tools, that's uh, control shift underscore in Pro Tools, that also works in Reaper. So you can um, start automating your clip gain like so and making points and changing things that way. Um, and this actually brings me to my next point, which is automation and some of the similarities of editing automation in Retooled versus Pro Tools. In Reaper, the way you show volume automation is the V key, and that will add this track below you. And um, let's just talk about some of the ways that you edit volume automation. So in Pro Tools, how you interact with the automation depends on what tool mode you're in. And because Reaper doesn't have tools in the Pro Tools sense, um, we have to kind of take a multi-tool approach to how we interact with automation. So here is the sort of quick and dirty explanation of how to do it. If you just click on the lane, it should add a point. And then if you double click on a point, it should delete it. So that's probably the most simple way to start working with automation. And then you can move the points around to change the volume. Um, or you can hold down the command key and click, and that will also add a point, or you can hold down the option key and that will delete a point. So that's the same as in Pro Tools. And then if you hold down control or the start key in Windows and drag, um, you can draw automation manually. This is just like how it works in Pro Tools, at least when you have the multi-tool or smart tool activated. It's sort of like always being in the smart tool in Pro Tools. Okay, so that was a really quick and dirty overview of some of the similarities between Reaper Retooled and Pro Tools. If you're a Pro Tools user and you're used to using that program, hopefully you can see how the key commands and editing workflow are pretty similar. Um, so you can use Reaper Retooled without having to relearn the whole program. Um, so that's it for now. I got to run. But if you are uh, newer to Reaper or newer to editing in general and want to learn more about why I'm making these kinds of edits or how, when I decide to make these types of edits, um, I will be doing that in a future video. So until then, take care.